Hello, and uh, welcome to Esquire Group's uh, webinar with Art and Capital on Second Citizenships and Residency Programs. Uh, my name is Jimmy Sexton. I am the founder and CEO of Esquire Group. We're uh, an international tax advisory firm uh, serving uh, mainly uh, high net worth individuals, family offices, multinational enterprises, and investment funds. Uh, joining us today is Habila Malwagi from Art and Capital. Uh, Habila is an investment banker and highly skilled business development expert with specialty in the African market. He's held positions in Chevron, Nigerian Limited, Value Pro Nigeria, Swiss Biostat, Nexus Financial Services, and Standard Chartered Bank in Dubai before joining Art and Capital, where he covers the East and West African market for the company. His expertise includes investment banking, wealth management, private banking, and market analysis, business development consulting for international companies in Africa. Awarded in 2015, the top 6% business development specialist in Africa, uh, Abila has over the years built an incredible portfolio of high and ultra high net worth individuals. Um, as you can see, quite an impressive guy, and he's gonna be taking us through uh, this presentation on second citizenships and residency programs. Uh, Habila, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Jimmy, and uh, good morning, everyone. If you are joining me from uh, from Nigeria or from uh, some part of Europe, and uh, I think it's good evening in the U.S., because uh, I have a couple of people, I'm sure, joining from the U.S. as well. Um, Jimmy has already done all the introduction that uh, I need to do, so I don't think I have to say anything much about myself. Uh, but yeah, my name is Habila uh, Malgui, um, a Nigerian born, um, and uh, I'm actually the director for business, art and capital uh, in Dubai. I head the East and West African market for the company. Um, I will try as much as I can to make this presentation very, you know, swift and interesting. So we don't get bored because I know sometimes the CIP topic can be a little bit boring at times, <laughs> but um, I hope that we would enjoy it. Uh, over the few, I, I would say, years that I've actually been working with Art and Capital, I've traveled to so many parts of the world. And one of the questions I'm always faced, especially when I meet with the high and ultra high network individuals is, look, you know, we have issues with our tax. Um, we, we have mobility issues. Sometimes they have private jets lying there at the airport and they can't even get a visa to fly out. And, you know, I've discovered that it's not just about you having money that enables you to acquire a visa. Sometimes you get rejected for just no reason, you know? Uh, and so this has been something that has troubled a lot of people. For some, it's about security, safety, especially those who are living in areas where there's so many, you know, crisis, uh, you know, and all that um, uh, sad enough, like my country, Nigeria, in the, in the east, northeastern part of Nigeria. Um, so it's, we, we're faced with a whole lot of issues like this. And people want to secure their future, future of their children, future of their business and all that. And this is why... One of, one, one, one of the things I'd like to add to that is not, not just the mobility and the security, uh, but also uh you know uh, financial flexibility uh because yes. Yes. you know a lot of a lot of banks and financial institutions um you know e even some law firms uh, and accounting firms won't deal with nationals from certain countries uh exactly. and, and it certainly helps to be be a resident uh, or citizen of of a, of a more widely uh, accepted uh, country. So I, for, for, you know, ultra high net worth individuals and high net worth individuals that, uh, you know, are in business, that's definitely a, a, another factor to consider. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, so there's so many reasons why, you know, you might need to, um, you know, acquire a second passport. Um, now I will take us through the uh, presentation straight so that we don't uh, waste too much time. Like I said, now, Athen Capital is a global financial firm. We have our head office situated in Montreal, Canada. Uh, we have offices in around 15 countries uh, around the world. 
we have actually been trusted advisors for several governments and even at the moment we're currently advising the government of Anguilla um, on implementing this program. Now we have attracted over the years a little bit above 3.5 billion, I would say, um, because I think that we have a current uh, number of foreign direct investment that has been, you know, attracted into several countries that we run this project for, uh, which is a very good. If you look at 3.5 billion, it's it's a very good number, I would say. Uh, we have investors of over 3,100 in the past five years certified partners around the world. And these are people that we work with um, that uh, you know, help us in getting these programs uh, done. We have over 500 of them. The government we have worked with, 11, and it has grown to about 12 at the moment, or I think 14. Um, like I said, offices around the world, we have 15, 15 offices. Sorry. Now, what is our vision? as a company. Our vision is to become a leading financial advisory firm. Uh, and this is what we have tried as much as we can to do over the past years. Um, right now, Arton Capital is rated as the top uh, CIP company in the world. We have done very well in all the fields. Uh, one of the major achievements I would say that we have done especially is the a passport index tool that had ranked the UAE the most powerful passport in the world. Um, uh, if some of you have actually seen this news, now we have. Uh, sorry. Going through um, the cycle of people that we deal with, who are our clients? We have individuals, we have government agencies, and also certified partners. Now, high net worth individuals are those people who come to us and say, Art and Capital, we have issues with our tax, with mobility, with our finances, and we want you to help us. We look at their situation, and what we do is try as much as we can to present them a solution that can help them uh, in getting a passport that suits their need. So usually these needs are actually tailored made, I would say because you have to uh, tell us exactly what your problem is. For example, if you have issues going to China, um, you wouldn't think about acquiring a passport that would still not give you a visa free to China. So what I would advise you is to say, okay, if your problem is going to China, why don't you look at passports like the Grenadian passport that would give you access to China? So most times it's not about how many countries you can travel visa free, but it's about where exactly do you want to go to? What exactly is your problem? So we need to really listen to those problems. We need to really ask you this question before we are able to help give you a solution. For governments, we have become, or we are actually trusted advisors uh, to the government, and we have designed, implemented, and managed a whole lot of projects for the government. We are also uh, marketing uh, agents for a couple of governments as well. We have a proven track record in Canada, Bulgaria, Hungary, Antigua, Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, and St. Lucia. Over 400, which is around 500 sci-fi partners around the world that provides this you know, bespoke um, uh, services to our clients. And not just that, but we have been able to also provide tools to our partners to use, to help them also provide these solutions to their own clients. Now, let's take a look at the industry itself. This industry over the last three decades have changed. It has changed, um, uh, Say you know it wasn't the way it is uh, you know today, but thank God to companies like Arthur Capital who came and changed the game. The available programs have doubled in the last five years. There used to be just about three, four programs, and today, if you look at all around the world, I think there are programs up to fifteen to I think about sixteen programs in general. You have individuals now who 
have seen the benefit of getting a second citizenship. And so the demand is growing everywhere in the world. People are clamoring for a second citizenship. There is a very intensified uh, global shift of wealth, and which means that there are more people now who have money to be able to you know, acquire a product like this. So if you look at like in China, um, in the last, uh, I think, four or five years ago, the number of wealthy people were just around um, probably a half a million. And now we're looking at about one to two million <laughs> high net worth individuals in that country alone. Well, that's, that's, so you can, that's, that's a huge number. increase. Yes, that's a huge increase. So it, 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 this is just to show you that, you know, the world is changing. People are making money. People are getting rich legitimately. You know, I mean, anyway, it's not for me to say whether it's legit or not, but um, this is what we're seeing around the world, uh, the serious uh, change in this. Um, also, you know, ease of mobility is, 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 uh, is becoming a very big thing now. So everybody wants to get mobility. They want to be free. People want to travel. I want to be able to just get to the airport and jump on a plane. I don't want to spend five days waiting for a Schengen visa. I don't want to spend two weeks waiting for a Canadian visa. I don't want that. So people don't want this anymore. Time is money, they say. So when you waste a lot of time, if you have a business opportunity that is supposed to be sealed in the next five days, and this information just gets to you today, you want to be able to jump on the plane and go close this deal. But you see, when you don't have a passport that enables you to travel to this country without having to apply for a visa, it's either you skip this trip or you have to apply, which, well, some embassies now, they give an express service, but then what is the guarantee that you would even get this visa? Now, I, would, I just want us to take a look at all the countries, uh, or rather the programs that uh, we have as a company. Now, for Canada, we were appointed as a strategic uh, advisor for the, for the country, which is in Quebec specifically. We were the, uh, one of the approved financial intermediary companies. In Bulgaria, also advisory role. We advise them on the policies. In Cyprus, the same thing. In Hungary, the same thing. Um, Armenia also. At the moment, uh, we are also trying to see how we can kick off a program with Armenia. So we try to, you know, advise um, for them. Antigua and Babuda, we are their strategic role advisors and also the marketing, authorized marketing agent. Uh, Dominica, the same thing, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Kitts. So you see, when you talk about art and capital as a company, we are not just a company that just sells passports. So I try to tell people our job is not to sell passports. We are changing lives. We're impacting the world. We are trying to bring a balance between human and economic value. Um, these countries now have another means of generating revenue. Instead of either borrowing money from you know, the World Bank or wherever, you have a way of bringing in money. And for example, like in the Caribbean island, they have very little natural resources. So this is a very big way for them to generate revenue. It's a very, very important way. So but when you as an individual invest in this country, you're not just buying their passport. You're not just investing in that, in, in that economy, but you're changing lives. You are, have become, you have automatically become someone who have created jobs because these funds are used to build roads, to create more jobs and, you know, infrastructures and, 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 and create a better life for people. So you have actually impacted someone's life somewhere in the world. So by, that's why we call uh, in the, uh, people who invest as global citizens because you're not just citizen of your country anymore, but you're impacting the world. Now, our index have become a benchmark in the industry and this is for people to understand and evaluate uh, our available options. It is easier for you to go on our website and, you know, you, for example, you are looking for a program, say, around 1,000 or thereabout. 
our tool, which is on the, the, the on, on our website, can give you that opportunity to select the program you want, to put in all your information, and you will see the exact amount. So if your budget is 200,000, you can find something for 200,000, depending on the number of you know, applicants or depending on your situation. So we, as a company, what we thought of was to develop tools that will help individuals, and not just individuals, but even our agents, our partners, uh, you know, so that you can you can be able to 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 have an exact information of what you would give to your own clients. Now I am talking that's really about cool. agents. I've never, I've never, that's, that's really cool. I've never seen you know a company build a tool like that um, yes. for this purpose. I mean, that's really useful for people to uh, help themselves and find out if if they have any options and what they are. Of course. You see, the, the reason why we've been able to do this again is because so many times you get a call and people say, uh, I want to know how much is this, how much is that? Look, I mean, this is not we're, not, we're not in a supermarket or it's not a mall. It's so you need to be <laughs> able to go there yourself and use this tool. You need to be able to see it yourself. And uh, I mean, we thought about it and being an industry leader, we have to always be ahead of the game. We have to always be um, you know, two true steps ahead of every other person. So for us, if our clients are happy, they, 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 that's our satisfaction, you know? Now, uh, if you can see my screen, you can see something like a passport. Now, this is a booklet where you have all the information. It's a little booklet that looks like a passport, actually. And I, I'll be very honest with you guys. Uh, there, there was a time I was at the airport and I pulled this out mistakenly and actually, the immigration officer thought it was a passport. He said, can, can I see that passport? What passport is this? I'm like, oh, sorry, but <laughs> it's not a passport. This is uh, uh, it's just a booklet you know, from my company. So it really looks the like a passport. passport. Yes. Yeah, this is the Arton passport, exactly. <laughs> but I tell you, the reason why we've done this is because we want to give you a sense from the very moment you walk into our office or you meet with any of our staff anywhere in the world, and they pass you this booklet, you're already on your way to becoming a global citizen. So this is, this is the aim. This is the aim. So we give you this so you can go through it and have the feel. When you look at it two, three times, you have a feel like you're, re you're holding a real passport. You know? So we try as much as possible to put you in that, you know, that, that space where you feel already that you are already a global citizen. Now, publications. And I will tell you this, that Arton Capital is one of the company that has given out so much information about growth around the world, economic situations, name it. So if you look on the screen, you would see that we have actually published reports with a company called WealthX, uh, the Global Council on Migration, and now we're doing a couple of uh, publications with The Economist. I'm sure a lot of you will be surprised, but yes, there are so many reports that have gone out there that actually is in collaboration with Art and Capital and The Economist. So this is one of the, 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 the uh, public, uh, things about our publication um, um, arm of the company. Now, I've already talked about the booklet, which on the screen here, what you see is the metrics. The metrics gives you an overview of how much the programs are, which I would discuss about it later on, so I'm not going to spend much time on this page. Um, now, when we started these programs, Art and Capital looked at the whole scenario of the program, and we realized that there might be conflicts. We found out that if regulations are not put in place, we might have people who would just come in to you know, swindle people or create any issue or something like that. So we thought about putting together a council called the Global Investor Immigration Council. And what this council does is to oversee the practice of every company that is involved in running this business. So if you, for example, go to company A, and they tell you a wrong information and you pay money and you lose your money, then you have the right to report this issue to the GIIC. So our, the council is to put regulation 
and to put things in check. So just the way you have the financial sectors being regulated is the same way the CIP industry is highly regulated. So I'm saying this to my agents and you know to, to um, some of our clients online so that you know that um, uh, you, you, you don't have any fear because I'm being faced with questions like, oh, um, you know, is this real? Well, yes, it's real. And so you have the opportunity to actually report whatever issues you have to the GIIC. Passport index. Earlier when I started, I said I talked about the passport index. Now, this is a tool that allows you to explore, rank, and compare passports. For example, you hold, a, let's say, an American passport. And you want to see how many countries can you travel to and how many countries can you not travel to. There was a situation at the Nigerian airport, I think about a year ago or two years ago. A Nigerian lady flew into Nigeria, and at the airport, she thought she could just walk in because she was holding a blue passport. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, the immigration officers asked her, where's your visa? And she said, well, uh, I don't need a visa in America. And they said, well, sorry, but you do need a visa. Sorry, we can't let you in. And she was sent back. And she was sent back. So what we did was to come up with a tool that would help people go online, search for their passport, and you'll be able to see how many countries you can travel to visa-free and the countries you wouldn't be able to go so that you wouldn't be embarrassed when you get to certain airports. So, so, it doesn't so what matter. is the best passport? Um, you see, every passport is good. You know, like I said, every passport is good. And uh, I can tell you, oh, the American passport is the best. But what I can tell you is, according to our passport index, we have ranked the UAE's passport as the number one passport in the world. Okay? Wow. Uh, yes. Uh, and that was a big celebration at the Burj Khalifa. Um, you know, all the major buildings in the UAE, all the... You know the media. It was it was it was uh, it was actually everywhere on the news. UAE's passport is currently number one with a visa free of one sixty seven. And uh, to 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 shock you, they just signed another visa free with Burundi, which I think has taken them to one sixty eight. So impressive. the UAE, yeah. So it's impressive for you to know that, yeah, the the UAE is actually doing very very well to see that you know their passport becomes one of the best passport in the world. So this is what the passport index uh, helps you do. Uh, it, can, it helps you compare. If you are looking for a passport that will take you to certain countries, you can just go online, check on it. And then if you find that passport, look at the countries, you tick them. If that checks with you, then give us a call and say, hey, you know what? I, I, I think I need a solution passport. I think uh, I need a Cyprus, a Cyprus uh, a, a passport or I need a Bulgarian passport. Now. Probably some of you must have seen the Global Citizen magazine, which mostly, um, you know, their their uh, most lounges uh, 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 first uh, and all that uh, magazine that we actually publish every two months. And what we try to do is to connect people, connect business together. Uh, we bring different individuals um, on every edition. Like you can see, we've featured Andelina Jolie, we've featured uh, Idris Elba, George Cloney, um, even, uh, you know, late Kofi Annan, uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, Louis Figo, and Wyclef Jean, AK, Akon, and the rest of them. Um, and in this magazine, you would find out a lot about these people. You will see a whole lot of business. So just in case, you know, you're looking for something in particular, we try as much as we can to bring you this information. Also, we have the Global Citizen Forum, which is held, um, I think now it's every two years. The last one was in Montenegro in 2016. Um, oh, sorry, 2017. Um, uh, and it's one of the biggest, uh, you know, uh, forum and gathering. It was, and I, I hope that I'll see a whole lot of you um, come this year. When it's announced, I would also release information about that uh, sometime in the year.
We have a foundation as well. We believe in community development. We believe in impacting individuals' lives. And so we have a Global Citizen Foundation where you know, we help uh, you know, children, we help you know, people who are in need, we help them you know, achieve their dreams. Now, I would go straight into the program. One of the new program uh, that has come on board is Montenegro. And I know a lot of people are excited about Montenegro because uh, even when uh, it was launched in, I think, October, I had over 200 inquiries of people asking me, hey, Montenegro is now online. Um, you know, we're happy. Can you tell us more? Can we start? And all. So, yes, by I think the first quarter of this year, uh, we will officially announce it uh, and we will start running this program. Now, what is the program all about? This program is a citizenship program. And you, we have different type of investment, which is the investment in real estate in the north and in the south. If you want to invest in the north, which is the undeveloped or rather underdeveloped area, what you need is around $250,000. That is the real estate option there. If you want to invest in the south where it's very developed, you are looking at 450,000. The government fee is there, which is around 15,000. Uh, the contribution, because you actually need to make a contribution in Montenegro. It's compulsory. It's a hundred thousand, and that hundred thousand doesn't come back to you. Shortly, I'm going to show you guys uh, an Excel sheet that shows all this information and how much is going to come back to you and how much is not going to come back to you, uh, just for you to be clear and have a full understanding of the whole programs. Now, the advisory fee also is there. So, going straight up to the Excel sheet. As you can see in the Caribbean, we have Antigua, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Kitts. These are the countries that we have programs in in the Caribbean. The investment amount for a single applicant in Antigua is 100,000, while the real estate option is 200,000. All right? For Dominica also, it's 100 for single applicant and 220 for real estate. So the 100 is actually a donation. And this investment doesn't come back to you. While the real estate is, uh, you know, you invest in a hotel and any project that is there and you get your money back, which I'll show you how much you get back at the end. The same thing in Grenada, 150 donation and 350 real estate. 100,000 St. Lucia uh, a donation on 535,000 US uh, in government bonds, and also 300,000 real estate. St. Kitts and Navis, you have 150,000 for a single applicant donation and 200,000 for real estate. Now, of course, there are processing fees, you have the due diligence fee, and then you have the advisory fee which gives you a total of around 163,500 for the donation. Now, for some people who would always ask my returns, trust me, this money doesn't come back to you when it's donation. The money doesn't come back to you in any way. But if it's in the real estate, of course, your money would come back to you but you have to keep this investment for five years. So the total of the real estate will be 288,500. And what you get back after five years is your 200,000. However, if you look at the whole thing, which means that the total cost of what you will be losing will be 88,000. Now these are actually the processing fees, uh, the due diligence fees and the advisory fees, which of course, if you go to the, uh, for example, an embassy, 
to apply for a visa, you have to pay a certain fee, which does it's not it's non refundable. Now the same thing with Dominica and Grenada. I'm not going to talk too much so, about it. Uh, no, uh, uh, Avila, I just have one quick question, and that is with regard to the the yes, investment in the, in the real estate. The, I, I just want to want to mm -hmm. clarify: is the, the the investment like the, the two hundred thousand? This is this is a private investment uh, that you make, like you buy a land for two hundred thousand or something like this, or this is an investment that's made through like the government's real estate fund or something like that. How, how does that work? No. So basically, these there are projects. For example, in St. Okay. Pete's, you have you have the Park Hyatt. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, but in 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 Grenada, you have Mount Cinnamon. So this investment, okay. what you're doing is you're investing in this in this project. Okay? Now I have a I have a, I have a, I have a couple of questions. So so if you're investing in the project, so um, if you if you like the investment in the project, can you leave it in longer than five years? Well, if you do want to take your money after five years, yes. If you want to leave it also, yes, you can leave. Okay. Uh, but look, it doesn't change anything because you're not making no profit, actually. I mean, you're no, no, exactly I, I understand. I, I was just wondering. Right? Yes, yes. So so that's exactly what comes back to you. What you put in is what you get uh, at, at the end. Now, sometimes uh, there might be 2 3%, but look, and the Caribbean is a Caribbean. So you, don't, you shouldn't really expect uh, returns on that. And what I try to explain is that your main purpose of investing is to get a passport now in the caribbean you get your passport within six to eight months six to eight months from the day that the file is lodged so i get people that make their first trench of payment and they think that is when the the the, the, the counting of the month starts no it starts the day your file is lodged at the unit in Antigua or in Dominica or in Grenada or any other place. So if you delay in giving us your documents for a month, don't think as if your file is already moving. No, as a matter of fact, your file is maybe right with us, with the processing guys. Because until your documents are completed, until everything is in check, that is the only time we'll be able to submit your documents. Otherwise, when we submitted, they would come back to us and ask us for these and ask us for that. And, you know, before you know, it becomes a little bit, uh, uh, you know, somehow. So we, we, don't, we don't want that situation. So put it in mind that from the day of lodging your document, you will receive a letter that, yes, your document has been received and already is in process because there is a due diligence process time as well which takes about three months in most cases maybe four months depending on the individual so if it's an individual that is high risk the due diligence might take more time because the intelligence community wants to make sure that the decision they're going to send back to the unit is a fair decision so have it in mind that is case by case the six to eight months doesn't mean for everybody. Six to eight months, or let's say even four months sometimes. I've, I've received passports in four months. Now, this is because this guy was very fast. And when we submitted, we counted, it was actually four months on the dot when I received his passports. There was no issue with, you know, the due diligence, everything was clean and that. Now, I would also want to tell everyone here that it is important that we get a clear picture of your situation. So if you have, for example, an issue, maybe three years ago, you, you, you were arrested for maybe any kind of crime or anything, you know, you need to tell us upfront because only that, only then can we look at the situation and advise you if yes, you should go forward or not. We also have our own internal due diligence process that we would have to run a DD on you before we even onboard you as a client. Now, sometimes there are due diligence that even when it's run, I mean, it shows positive. 
But when an EDD, which is called an, uh, an enhanced due diligence, is done on that same client from the uh, intelligence community, something pops up. So there can be several cases of denial. We don't really have much cases of denial, denial because we try to mitigate that. Uh, and that's why we have our own strict internal due diligence process. Uh, and if you can pass that, then you are at least 70 to 80 percent good to go. OK. Uh, I mean, if there are any questions, if anyone wants to ask me any question, I mean, feel free to 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 just stop me and uh, ask me while we uh, we continue. Now, going for an applicant who has a wife. So if you are uh, a man who have a wife or you know a woman with a husband and you want to know exactly how much uh, it's going to cost you i will just go through it briefly so the contribution still remains the same hundred thousand all right however twenty six thousand would be the processing fee for the main applicant and a thousand three hundred would be for the spouse the same thing with the real estate option. 51,000 will be the processing fee for the main applicant and 1,300 would be for the spouse. All right, so uh, there's no much uh, difference. Uh, it's just the due diligence as well would be 7,500, uh, but in two places, which would be around 15,000 for two persons. Um, but that's just it for that. And the same thing, you know, you don't get no return for donation. Uh, your whole money goes for real estate. Yes, you get your two hundred thousand, and what you're losing will be a hundred and two thousand. That would be your cost. Same applies to to all other programs. Now, for three, the same thing, but if you want to add additional you know, dependent. So let's say family of five, okay? If you have a newborn before approval, 25,000 would be the additional cost. So if you want to add your spouse after approval, for example, if you were not married, which gives you actually the advantage, a lot of single people who, you know, they want to do it, but they're thinking, what if I get married with my wife? Yes, you have an opportunity. Uh, with an addition of 7,500 and 300 uh, plus another 75 and then plus another 6,000, yes, you can actually um, add your spouse by the time you get married. So this is everything. I'll just allow you guys to take a look at it. There's no much information to give here. It's just the numbers. All right, so we move on. For those who are also interested in the EB-5 program, which is the US, and also the Quebec immigration program in Canada, we have the investment in bonds, which is around 510,000. I'll tell you why it's around 510,000. The extra 10,000 actually guarantees the safety of your half a million, all right? So many times people actually think that their money is not at risk in the US uh, program. But you see, and to be honest with you guys, the program is expected to, uh, rather your funds in the program is one, should be 100% at risk. This is, this is what the, the process and the policy of the EB-5 program states, that your investments is 100% at risk. So what we've been able to do with the bond system is that when you pay additional 10,000 in bonds, you actually secure your money. So instead of investing the money directly in the regional centers where of course probably you might um, it, you, it, you might have you might get at the end of the day probably 400,000 or 300, you don't know what is going to come back to you. Um, with an additional 10,000, which would be invested in bonds, your funds are safe and secure. 
The processing time is around 12 months, could be longer. You have five years to six years citizenship, no language requirement. Of course, it's the United States. In Canada, it is only bonds. I, I just want it's it's the the EB the EB five program though is not not citizenship though right it's a green card. Yeah, it's a green card. It's a green card. Yeah. You got a green card from the day of approval. Your green card is issued to you, uh, and then you have to actually leave in the country to get to become uh -huh. a citizen. Okay, and after yeah. five years you can get the get the citizenship. Yes. Now, just to go yeah, back yeah. again with the Caribbean, with the Caribbean, you don't even need to go there. You're just going to sit in your house, give us all the documents, we'll process, and your passport comes to you. All right? Um, but in That's the U.S., of course, you, yeah, in the U.S., you have to go at some times, a certain time, you have to visit, and you have to leave there. You have to leave there. So usually it's not too um, attractive for people who have their business somewhere else. Um, they don't I mean, want to no, leave what, that country. The one thing I'll, I'll add to that, and that's just, you know, uh, because, you know, as you know, international tax is my business. Um, hmm. I mean, the, the, the U.S. the US EB-5 program, I've seen a lot of people do it, you know, to try to get their kids green cards, you know, stuff like exactly. that, uh, so that they can live there and take advantage of the education programs, um, which, which, you know, is definitely beneficial. But I think, as you said, for a lot of people, uh, that are, are engaged in international business, um, the U.S.'s tax system uh, usually is not, not so advantageous. True, true. Yeah, so, so for people who are actually high and ultra-high net worth, uh, honestly, this program is not too attractive to them. So, um, but yeah, like you said, Jimmy, um, those who want to, you know, send their children to America, they want them to get green cards, they, yeah, this is a very good opportunity for them. I mean, the same thing applies to Canada. You know, the same thing applies to Canada. It's, it's, it's a green card as well. Uh, you need to stay there for around five to six years before you actually um, get uh, your passport. Um, the total cost is around 345000 financed option. Um, and what is the finance option? Now, the finance option is uh, instead of you paying, I think the full amount of the program is around 500 or 600,000 thereabout. Um, we are actually given the opportunity for individuals to pay just 330 and we finance the remaining one. Um, uh, this is just to ease you know, the financial burden on clients. So instead of you paying the whole amount, which could go to around seven to 800,000 Canadian dollars in the end. With just about three forty-five thousand, you are good to go. So this is a very, very interesting program, and we have so many people, so many people who are opting for the Canadian uh, finance option um, uh, with us. Um, any question? Yeah, if anybody has uh, has any questions, feel free to uh, type them in um, the uh, questions section and you go to webinar control panel and then uh we'll do a question and answer period uh at the at the end of the webinar great all right so now in europe we have bulgaria portugal malta montenegro cyprus i'm not going to talk about united kingdom because we've taken it off our list so we're not going i'm not going to talk about it but yes we have the bulgarian program the portugal program Maltese program and also the Montenegro. Investment in Bulgaria, government bonds is around 512,000 euros. However, there is a combined option for 195. So instead of 512, just like in Quebec, you only pay 195,000 and we, that's it. Now remember that this is also a residency program. But we have a fast track to citizenship. So instead of you staying for five years before you become a citizen, we can actually fast track the program. And within two years, or let's say three years in max, you get your passport. This is a very, very, very interesting program. People who want to get a passport in Europe, this is a very, very good program for them. 
Now, if you want to combine option also, uh, because most uh, mostly it's cheaper for you to go with a combined option from day one. Now, this combined option would be the residency and the citizenship together. And this will cost around 270000 The government fees would be uh, 7500 No processing fees. The advisory fee is 35000 if you are going for the government uh, bond or the financed option. Combined option will be 60000 and this is a one-time fee. You would not pay any other thing again. Total cost for combined is 337500 or if you want to go the full investment would be 554500 Processing time is six months. Citizenship in five years. That is if you just want a residency and wait for five years. But if you want to go with the combined option, which is a fast track, um, we're looking at uh, three years in max. Well, three years in max, or two years from the day that you receive your green, sorry, your your rest, your permanent residency. In Portugal, the investment we have is a real estate investment option. Two hundred and eighty thousand, uh, usually in a hotel. Uh, it's actually mo most of them are boutique hotels, but they're amazing hotels. Um, the applicant application fees uh, is just around 10,000 uh, euros thereabouts. Um, so we're looking at in total, if it's, it's going to be just around 300,000. But then the processing time is around nine to actually 12 months. Okay. Um, I don't want us to actually mix this up because people, there are people out there who tell you, oh, six months. No. It's around nine to 12 months, nine to 12 months. Five years also to citizenship. There is no fast track and there is no finance option in Portugal. You need to leave in Portugal at least seven days in a year. At least seven days in a year. If you want to get the passport in five years. In Malta, we have the government bonds, which is 330,000. And this basically is a financed option, okay, um, uh, with the government bonds. However, if you want to go only for the, uh, what you call it, um, they call it the MRVP, which is the Maltese Residency Program, this gives you a PR from day one. The good thing about Malta is that on the fifth year of you holding your PR, you are eligible to live and work anywhere within Europe and Schengen, just with the PR, okay? Other parts of Europe, you cannot travel to Schengen and Europe with your PR. So Malta gives you the opportunity with the PR to travel across Schengen and Europe, visa free. But then on the fifth year, you can even leave and walk in any part of Europe and Schengen. This is really good for individuals who have kids that are just finishing or graduating from university. Uh, if you are having unemployment issues in your country, Malta is a good place um, for you to look at because by the time your kids have spent that five years holding the PR card of Malta, they can decide to relocate to France, to Geneva, to Davos, to, you know, anywhere, Luxembourg. You know, they can live there. They can get a job there. I remember that Malta, I think, is a top three um, uh, strongest economy in Europe. So it's a very, very strong country. The finance option that would give you the PR is around 170,000. Okay, now this money doesn't come back to you because it's financed. So with 170,000 euros capped, 
you get your PR. Any questions on Malta? All right, great. Process in time. It's around three to six months or even more. And this depends on the nationality because Malta is a little bit selective and they actually pay a whole lot of attention when it has to do with uh, certain nationalities. So for example, if you're uh, an African passport holder, like Nigeria, uh, Nigerians actually takes more than six months because of the due diligence that takes place. Now, this is done because Malta is one of the country that gives you visa-free access to the United States of America. So when you eventually obtain the passport, you can actually travel to the US visa-free. All you need is to apply for an ETA online, which it's about within 24 hours you receive it, you would get the approval. So you can see why their program is a little bit complex. So they are picky when it has to do with nationalities, not because of anything, but just because they actually look at the you know, risk nature of every country. And they're trying as much as possible to see that they don't bring people who will in the end you know, destroy the reputation of the country. So this is actually the advantage of, the, of Malta that it gives you visa free to the United States of America. But this program here is a residency program and it is six years to citizenship. So after six years, actually not five, but it's in the six, on the sixth year, you actually get your passport. Now, we've already talked about Montenegro, uh, which I will not uh, uh, talk about it anymore. However, I'm gonna come back to the slide because I just want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the investments in Montenegro. Now, some of the already established hotels in Montenegro, and this is why I would say um, I a lot of people are really eager to see that this program has, you know, is kicking off 100%. You have the one and only Hilton, Aman, um, Chedi, uh, you know, Proto Montenegro region and the Sheraton. I have personally been to Montenegro and I'll tell you it is a beautiful and an amazing country. Now, at, by 2022, this country will be joining EU. So for now, Montenegro is not part of EU, but in 2022, it's going to join EU. Now, this is why your passport, by the time you get the passport, you would have a lot of advantage uh, with, with Montenegro. The tax also, for people who are looking at tax, you have an income, only in, internally, uh, income tax is what they charge, about 9%. Um, there's no worldwide tax. So uh, those of you who have issues of, you know, uh, uh, of, of, of uh, what do you call it, IRS, especially Americans, you don't have any problem anymore um, uh, with, with that. Now, going down again, I wanted to talk about Cyprus, and this will be the last uh, thing I'll talk about before we end this webinar. Investment amount in Cyprus is two million. Cyprus is a good program for people who are really looking for great returns on their money, people who are ready to invest. And I'll tell you why. Because you can actually make about 15 to up to 30% return on your investment in Cyprus. And this is a very, very attractive thing. What we have been able to do, as a matter of fact, is to tell clients that, look, we can help you through this whole process. So we have a very, very great team out there in Limassol that would take you through the whole project from start till end. We will analyze, we will make a forecasting for you and tell you if you invest in project A in the next 12 months, we're looking at 20% for you or 30% for you. If you invest, in project B, 
we're looking at this of this percentage for you. So when you put your 2 million euros, your investment is supposed to stay for three years. But I can assure you that after the third year, you will be able to make even above the 2 million that you've invested. And your 2 million returns back to you. So it's a very, very good investment for people who are looking at you know, uh, making profits from their investments. And instead of just keeping your 2 million lying down there, you can invest in a passport in Cyprus uh, and make some very good returns within three years. The visa-free travel is 156 countries. So it is not a permanent residency. It is a straight to citizenship within six months. You get your passport. No, and and, and uh, Cyprus, Cyprus is a nice place. I was just there uh, in oh. November speaking at an international tax conference, and yes. uh, yeah, yeah, it's a nice, ni nice country, good food. I really enjoyed it. Yes, Cyprus is it's, it's a very it's a very very beautiful country. Uh, the weather is amazing. Uh, if you go there during the summer, it's it's something else. It's something else. So especially Limassol and Paphos. Um, so it's a very it's a very good place. And look. One of the things you should also put in mind is that Brexit is going to happen very soon. And when Brexit happens, countries like Cyprus would be at an advantage because other countries would need visa to the UK. Uh, you know, citizens of England also will need a, a, a visa to even France, to the closest European country next to them, they'll need a visa. So this is going to drop the value of the British passport. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing that already is, it's, it's, uh, it's carrying a lot of people. So when you have a British passport, I can assure you that when Brexit happens, you'll be faced with so many challenges. So if you're not used to applying for visas, you would find yourself applying for visas to France, to, to, to the closest European country. So I have seen a huge traffic of people from the UK now sending me inquiries for passports in Cyprus because Cyprus would be one of the heavens now for a lot of people would be a heaven for a lot of people from the UK all right yeah. so this brings us to the end of, uh, of this uh, of my presentation and uh, uh, I just want to thank um, Jimmy for having me here um, and yeah, if there are any questions, I will just check if there's any question. I'm happy so, to. So, uh, so uh, uh, Abila, thank you, thank you for for joining us. Uh, I'm actually going to unmute uh, the participants at, at this point, um, so that they can they can directly ask you any any questions without uh, having to type them type them in. Um, so just give me one second here. I'm going to unmute them right now. Let's see here. So uh, anybody uh, that has any questions, uh, you can either type them into uh, the the question section of um, your GoToWebinar control panel, or uh, feel free to, to speak up and ask either Habila or my, myself any questions you may have. Well, Abila, look, look, oh, uh, looks like somebody was trying to speak. Sorry, uh, Caroline. No, 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 no. I just, I really appreciate this. is fantastic information. Very informative. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, I'd like to thank uh, again uh, all of our our attendees for attending today. We really appreciate it, and uh, a big thank you uh, to uh, Habila and and Tala from Art and Capital for for joining us. Uh, for, for those of you who may have missed uh, the beginning part of our webinar, in about two to three weeks, uh, we will be posting it on our YouTube channel, which is um, youtube.com slash Esquire Group. And we will be sending out uh, a notification to everybody that attended once it's up and also publishing it on our social media. And uh, we hope to see you again on a future Esquire Group webinar. Thank you. Have a good day or evening wherever you're you're located. Thank you. Bye. -bye.